Here we go. We're getting ready for another training. Are you excited again? Uh, wake up, Levente. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> All right. So we'll get going tonight. We're going to get into starting on the writing. So let's go ahead and put the screen view on or share screen, I mean. Okay. Let's go to the desktop. No, oh, right, I got it all working the first time. Huh, good. <laughs> so, Lamente, you've started your journey to becoming a competent and confident speaker. Now, I've been sharing with you the system I use to prepare my speeches. It's called the speech preparation steps. We are still focused on the first step involved in the process. And what is that first step? It's creating content. Over the last three trainings, we've looked at what you do before you start writing the speech. It's called Knowing the Big Picture. And as we saw, there are three things you should know before you start writing a speech. To know your objectives, your audience, and your purpose. Now, your objectives are Everything, everyone's expectations of you from the outside, they're not yours. It could be the pathways objectives, it could be your boss or who you, if you're speaking at a conference. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when we talked about objectives is that should also include how much time you have to speak, because that's important to know as well. Then we have knowing the audience, and this is key. The more you know about your audience, the more you can tailor the, your speech to really have impact on them. And that's not always easy to do. It's a challenge, but it's one we can grow in. And then we're just knowing our purpose. And that is what will guide us through everything as we go forwards. Now, knowing the big picture, remember, serves as a guide to help you determine what you're going to write. You can think of it as a map to help you figure out where, how you're going to get to your destination. So that was step one, and we move on now to the second step. And what is that second step? It's the writing process. What you do during the writing process to create your speech. And what is involved in, in that process? Well, again, three things. I always like to keep things to three. You begin by making an outline, then you work on writing the speech. And lastly, you finish by fine tuning what you wrote. Now today, we're gonna to focus only on making an outline. The outline is like a blueprint, just like in this image I'm using here for building a house. Blueprints, they help you put things together. They give you the skeleton and then things are put onto it. And that's what happens with an outline. It gives you the basic structure for creating your speech on how the speech should flow. There are a variety of ways to make outlines. Now today, I will share with you how I do it, but I will also give you a PDF with links to articles so you can learn more about making outlines from other perspectives. Now, just to give you one example of different ways of doing outlines, some people like to write out their, put, make their outlines so that they're full sentences. And others like to use phrases or just enough to make the idea clear. And that's what I like to do, just enough to make the idea clear. Now there are different types of outlines. And the two main ones I wanna share with you is a preparation outline versus a speaking outline. And how are they different? Well, a preparation outline, like it says, it helps you to prepare to write your speech. Now a speaking outline, are the notes you use when, while speaking to help you remember what to say. So those are the notes you bring up with you when you speak. But in Toastmasters, we're only having seven minute speeches. and We should never have to use a paper for that. So we should try to always make it a goal never to use any kind of crutch like that for doing a speech in Toastmasters, unless you're getting into a longer speech, like 20 minutes or whatever. So, your outline should include the basic ideas of what you want to say during your opening, in the body of the speech, and during the closing. A lot of times, 
I work, here's something I do a little different than, than most people. I work on the opening and then the closing first. Then I work on the body because I find that it makes it easier a lot of times if I know where I'm starting and where I want to finish. And so I will try that. It, it works most of the time. There's been a couple of times that for me, it just didn't work out. So I had to just do the one, two, three, you know, just the normal way of doing it. But I like when I can figure out the beginning and ending first, because I can always go back and change things if the middle makes me see things differently. Now in the body of the speech, it can be broken down into the main points and the sub points. And your main points are just your main ideas. And the sub points are the supporting factors you wanna share about those main ideas to help the audience know what you're talking about. Then lastly, we have transitions. Now transitions are used to connect your ideas with each other in a way that helps your audience to follow and understand the flow of your speech. Now, many people wait until they finish the entire speech and writing the whole thing before they work on their transitions. Not me. I like to work on them while I'm making my outlines. Again, just the basic ideas for each one. But nothing set in stone. You know, I'm flexible sometimes. If I can't get an idea for a transition, I'll wait till later. But like I said, I like to get things figured out as best I can during the outline because then it helps me get my speech going a lot quicker. Now here are some, here's a very basic outline structure. Now I couldn't fit it all in a big list so everything fit, but we see here what we're going on, what's going on. Um, we have the opening and then you have the body and at the end you see the closing. And for each main point, you see that there's three sub points. It doesn't necessarily mean this will always be the way it is, but this is just a general idea of how to do it. And I find it's really good to try to keep things to three main points if you're doing a speech without slides or anything like that. So, because people can't handle a lot of in their memory while you're speaking. So usually three main points, three sub points, that's pretty much a good thing to do. It, it doesn't mean that you can go over that, but it's, it's, it should be as something to go as a general rule. Now here is my basic outline that I did for my second speech in the old Toastmaster manual, the company communication manual. And in that manual, they, um, it, it was a speech where you had to focus on making an outline, working on your opening body and closing and transitions. And it has some good advice in there. And you have the OCC manual in your new member resources folder. So if you go in there and look, just look for old Toastmaster manuals. And you can find it, project two. So this was what I wrote for mine. Of course, you can't read that. So I did something a little different. I put it like this. Now, I tend to write my purpose statement at the top. But at least here's what I encourage you to do. Write out your, um, the, the, not only your purpose statement, but your pathways, you know, the objectives for everything. So get that big picture all on one piece of paper or on your computer so you can see it all at once. And look at that each time you start working on your, your speech, just to remind yourself of the things that you want to accomplish. And when you finish the speech, you should look at it again to make sure that you did it. Okay. So here's how I put it, the purpose statement to persuade the audience to overcome their fears by showing them the why, what, and how of facing fears, their fears. So in my opening, here's what I did. I talked about fears that control us and give some examples. And I shared about my fear of heights. And then I talked about how fears affect us and talked about how they limit us and keep us from reaching our potential. And I said, so when it comes to our fears, where do we start? That was my first transition. Now again, remember, this is just the short view. The longer views I'll, show, I'll share with you when we get to the next uh, training. So on the next part, we had the get into the body and start with the heart of the matter. And I talked about our hearts have three main desires and what happens when our desires are disrupted, disrupted and also public speaking as an example of when those desires are disrupted. Like, feeling comfortable, things like that. And all of a sudden you're not, whoa, geez. 
then so what should we do then i shared my personal story you know i was on one of these uh outdoor obstacle courses and i had to climb one of those what 10 meter five, i don't know 10 15 meter poles and i was on i was strapped into a harness but i have a fear of heights and as i was going up that pole would move just a little bit oh my gosh my adrenaline was pumping and i was shaking so hard so I was sharing all these things. And you know, so I shared that story. And then what I noticed, what happened afterwards, and then, then that led to a discovery. And I shared all that. And then I transitioned over talking about there's a way to have victory over fear. And so this next step, now remember, this was my second speech I ever did. I have five steps. Now I would probably cut it down to three. I'd probably cut out uh, the second one, and the fourth one and just put those other ideas somewhere else as suggestions so here were the five steps i put identify the fears that control you show your list of people who know you and ask them for feedback seek to understand why these fears control you find someone who will encourage you and hold you accountable and pick one fear to get started and face it head on head on and i told everybody well, if you have a fear of public speaking, you're in the right place because that's what Toastmasters is all about. So after going through that, then I did a transition where I told them, now I want you to take away, I want you to remember three things. And I told them, everyone has fears, identify your fears, and then face your fears. And I closed it with this paraphrase of William Wallace from the Braveheart movie. And it went something like this everyone dies i but not everyone truly lives face your fears and you will learn to truly live i then give me a clap and go sit down so that is a very simple look at doing an outline so it's not that complicated as far as knowing the ideas but that takes a bit to learn and so i really encourage you to to work on this so the call to action from what I looked at today is this. You need to make an outline for your next speech and send it to me. But first you should do the big picture, then you, we'd work on the outline. Now I'm not sure if Grammarly will work on an outline if you just use phrases instead of sentences, but you might try it and just see what happens, okay? So we're at the end of what I wanted to share with you about making outlines. But as usual, let's finish our time with a little Q&A. If you've got some good Q&A questions for me, which I hope you do. Let me turn off the screen, screen share. Okay, young man. You have something to tell, ask me? Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. My question is, <clears throat> How do we, how should I prepare my speech in these three main chapters, like the opening, body, and closing from the type, time perspective? Is there any guideline which I should, mm -hmm. a standard guideline which I should follow, or I do it as I think it's fine for me? Well, I've seen where people say like you should have 10 to 20% maximum for the opening. You know, but here's what I do. I try to keep my openings as short as necessary, I guess is the way to say it. Because you don't want to get into a long opening because then people start to, oh, you know. So you want to really hit them right really good with your opening. You know, maybe like a question, a startling statistic, a quote. Um, but in some way, just get them going right away. And like I said, make, do it enough that you can get things said. And you, there's gonna be a couple other things you wanna say, like what you're gonna talk about and what it can do for them. But I'm saying usually in a, in a seven minute speech, I would say for sure no more than two minutes, okay, maximum. Maybe a minute, between a minute and two minutes. And I've actually had some out openings where I could get them down in 30, 40 seconds, you know? So it just depends on what you're talking about. Sometimes the subject takes a little bit more to get everybody ready to what you're gonna say. But as a general rule, I'd say one to two minutes on a seven minute speech. And then on the, the final part, I, again, it's one or two minutes on the closing. 
and your body, you know, four or five minutes, something like that. I'm just saying that's as a general rule. Every, there's always exceptions, but that you want to have most of it on the body and a little bit on the opening and a little bit on the closing. Does that help you? Yes, very much, very much. And I have another question if I have time for this. You sure I, do. Um, you have mentioned something about the quotes and the statistics. Is there any, any rule which can help me to put a quote in the closing or in the opening or the statistics in the opening? I think I have used statistics in the opening, which is, I think it suits better uh, a speech generally. But what is your opinion about this? Well, it, it depends again. This, there's, it depends on what you're talking about. And if it's a statistic in the opening, it should be somewhat startling. It should be something that's like different. If it's just common, common knowledge, people are going to go, so what? You know, so you want to be something more exceptional for the opening. And when you're trying to um, share the reasons for what you're saying in the body, then the normal statistics can work fine there. But I tend to, like I said, I, I, you could start a speech like this, you know. Why not? There's 200 people in this room, and 1.1% of you are going to be going to die during this time. So one of you is not going to be alive by the end of it. The speech. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would get everybody's attention, don't you? <laughs> no, but I mean that's being silly, but it's the idea that you want to get something. And later on, when I did my the fear speech I just shared with you during the train, I did it again for a spring contest and I changed the speech a whole bunch and I started with a quote and it went like this quote was like this, our fears establish the limits of our lives. Our fears establish the limits of our lives. And that's how I started my speech and I paused and then went on, okay? So I keep turning the side to look at you instead of looking at the camera. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So, any other questions? Oh. You have uh, that. That would be last. The last one. The the openings. It's very clear for me. It's it, it's it's fascinating about the opening. The, how about the closing? What would you, for example, do you have a? Have you heard the best? Can you tell me the best closing you ever heard, even in your speeches or other people's speeches, um, which you like? the most if you remember something like that i can't think off the top of my head but generally the ones i've i can say overall that i've liked have focused on like connecting back to the opening somehow it relates to the opening i like it when the closing connects to the opening you know also in the closing you you know you can do like a review of the main points you talk about you can really clarify or get really focused on your the main message you know your purpose you can focus on that but i always like to do this i'd like to end on a high note like saying something funny or interesting or motivating so that you leave when you're done everybody's going yeah so you want to end your last your last thing is to end strong because you don't want to go you know do all the stuff and it's going great and you go oh i'm out of time Thanks, bye. <laughs> and I've seen people do that, you know. And also, just so I forgot about this, when you're doing a Toastmaster speech, when you get done speaking, you should look, if, it's in, if we're in person, you should look at the Toastmaster and say, Mr. Toastmaster? Or if it's a contest, Mr. Contest Chair, Madam Contest Chair? But just don't stop. And I see people doing that. Because you have the stage, and now you want to give the stage back to whoever is in charge. Okay. So just close simply with Mr. Toastmaster. That's all you have to say. Okay. And when you start a speech, don't ever start it with fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, blah, blah, blah. That's all standard. You want to get right in and say, one of you is going to die today. You know, you just want to grab them. Okay. So don't yeah. get into all this. I mean, really, yeah, that, that's, it's, for me, this dear, to, dear fellow Toastman, dear guest, it's like, it was, it was like a vaccine for me uh, when I started to, 
yeah. to come to Toast. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought, I thought I have to do this. I thought yeah. somebody will, will beat me outside if I don't do this. No. But I tend to have it in my speech, but I use, I generally use it towards my conclusion when I get towards the end and I go, fellow toaster, Toastmasters and dear guests, I encourage you to face your fears, you know, when I'm going into the closing. So I'm saying, I tend to, tend to find a place where it fits, but I don't use it in the opening. Don't do this. You know, I'm glad to be here. It's nice to be with you. Um, oh. You know, I didn't really prepare very well for this. I'm sorry, everyone. Don't ever do that, okay? <laughs> I've done this. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, any other questions before we close? Nope. It okay. was enough. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was my pleasure. And so, next time on Wednesday, hopefully I'll have it already. I still have a lot of work to do on where we look at the body. I mean, the opening and closing in the, in the body. And look at some of the key things to focus on when, you, when you're working on those things. So until then, auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>